This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Last Saturday, Halloween night at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada, in a championship contest that was broadcast on ESPN+. Unified IBF WBA Bantamweight Champion Inoue Noia squared off against challenger Jason Maloney. The action began with a tactical rhythm. Inoue was sharper out of the gate, and he was doubling up the jab and investing downstairs early. Inoue was boxing more effectively, but Maloney was not intimidated and he was landing some shots of his own. But Inoue was dictating the flow with an intelligent jab, and his jab was creating openings for some well-timed power shots. Inoue was also landing some sharp counters, and his patient aggression was creating a lot of problems for Maloney. This trend continued throughout the early rounds. To his credit, Maloney remained steadfast in his efforts, but whenever he was able to land something significant, Inoue almost always fired back with something more significant. Inoue began opening up more as things progressed, and he was dissecting Maloney with surgical-like precision. In round six, Inoue dropped Maloney with a short, crisp counter-left hook. Maloney beat the count and continued bravely battling the best he could, but he was simply unable to slow down the monster. As round seven was winding down, Inoue blasted Maloney with a nuclear right hand that had the challenger down again. Referee Kenny Bayless began his count, and he decided it was time to wave it off after he had reached a count of eight. The fight was over. Inoue Naoya had retained his unified championship, and he did so in dominant style. Inoue has reaffirmed the fact that he is one of the greatest boxing talents competing today. At worst, Inoue is top three. With Vasily Lomachenko recently suffering an upset loss at the hands of Teofimo Lopez, Inoue is one of three boxers that is generally viewed as the best in the world today the other two being Canelo Alvarez and Terence Crawford. Personally, I think the ordering here is highly debatable. When Floyd Mayweather retired in 2015, he was clearly the pound-for-pound -pound king of boxing. There was absolutely no question about it. But since Floyd retired, notwithstanding the one-off fight he had afterwards, nobody has really seized that top spot. The only boxer who seemed to be on his way to solidifying that position was Andre Ward after he won back-to-back -back matches against Sergei Kovalev. But after scoring that impressive stoppage victory against Kovalev in their highly anticipated rematch, Ward retired. So the reality is, since Mayweather retired, nobody has truly claimed that top spot. But right now, the three frontrunners who currently top most lists are Canelo, Crawford, and Inoue. Inoue is now a perfect 20-0 with 17 of those victories coming by way of knockout. But more impressive still, Inoue is 15-0 in championship contests, with 13 of those 15 wins coming inside the distance. That is mighty impressive stuff any way you slice it. Quickly recapping, in April 2014, Inoue won the WBC Junior Flyweight Championship when he scored a sixth round technical knockout against Adrian Hernandez. In September 2014, Inoue defended that title when he scored an 11th round technical knockout against Widawas Basapian. In December 2014, Inoue jumped up two weight classes and dropped Omar Narvaez four times when he scored a second round knockout to become the new WBO Junior Bantamweight Champion. Inoue defended that championship in December 2015 when he scored a second round stoppage against Warlito Perenas. In May 2016, Inoue made another successful defense when he defeated David Carmona in a 12-round unanimous decision. 
In September 2016, Inoue again defended his title when he scored a 10th round knockout against Karun Jaropienlerd. In December 2016, Inoue made another defense when he scored a 6th round technical knockout against Kono Kohei. In May 2017, Inoue again defended his WBO Junior Bantamweight title when he scored a third round knockout against Ricardo Rodriguez. Inoue had another successful title defense in September 2017 when he scored a sixth round technical knockout against Antonio Nieves. In December 2017, Inoue made the seventh and final title defense of his 115-pound world title when he scored a third-round technical knockout against Yoan Boyo. In May 2018, Inoue moved up and defeated WBA Bantamweight champion Jamie McDonald by first-round stoppage. In October 2018, Inoue defended his Bantamweight Championship when he scored a first-round knockout against Juan Carlos Payano. In May 2019, Inoue won the IBF Bantamweight Championship when he scored a second-round knockout against Emmanuel Rodriguez. Last December, Inoue put his IBF title on the line when he squared off against WBA Bantamweight champion Nonito Donaire in a unification bout. Inoue emerged victorious in his most difficult challenge to date when he was awarded a 12-round unanimous decision. And of course, the monster won big this past Halloween in his dominant effort against Maloney. So Inoue is a perfect 15-0 in championship fights, and at 27 years old, he is already a three-division world champion who continues showing improvement. This is mighty impressive stuff, but if you listen to his loudest critics, they act as if he has never beaten anyone good, and many of his detractors are especially critical of his performance in his victory against Donaire. I personally do not believe that these are necessarily fair criticisms. I think a lot of it boils down to the fact that the lower weight classes tend to get far less exposure, and as a result, fans are simply much less familiar with the championship caliber boxers in these divisions. Regarding Donaire, it is true that Nonito was an older battle-worn champion, but it's important to remember that the championship fights Donaire lost before that were all north of 118. At Bantamweight, Donaire was undefeated in championship contests, and he clearly brought his A-game into his highly engaging battle with Inoue. While many people are critical that Inoue had some struggles against Donaire, I have the exact opposite view. I was thoroughly impressed by the fact that Inoue persevered and emerged victorious in such a grueling encounter. I view this as a positive. He overcame adversity and did so in magnificent style. Even this past Halloween, Inoue was up against an extremely tough, highly skilled rated contender in Maloney, and Inoue made him look rather ordinary. And for Inoue, this is business as usual. He has been performing at this level against the best these divisions have to offer for years. The fact remains, however, that perception has a tremendous impact on reality. The perception for many is that Inoue still has a lot to prove if he wants to earn the distinction of solidifying any would-be claim as pound-for-pound pound king of boxing. In other words, Inoue needs a better dance partner. Fortunately for him, there is one potential opponent out there who has many fans awfully excited. And that man is WBO Bantamweight Champion John Casimaro. This fight was actually scheduled to take place back in April, but with the unprecedented lockdowns resulting from COVID-19, it never came together. Hopefully that changes in 2021. That matchup would provide fans with a most intriguing unification bout between two legit heavy-handed power punchers. It is a mouth-watering prospect, and I for one would love to see it come together. Add my name to the chorus.
That's all I got. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.